Hey, kid, want a free TV? I mean, yeah, TVs have gotten steadily less and less expensive as they've gotten simultaneously bigger and better over the last several decades. And even without adjusting for inflation, the cost of a 55 inch 4K screen today would make anyone from the 1990s faint with envy. But the 90s TVs and before were pieces of furniture. You could build your house around it. Yeah, and you can't play Smash Brothers on these new ones. The yeah, the CRT, yeah, latency bad. But yeah, I mean, cheap is good. TVs cheaper than they've ever been. But like, you can't beat free, can you? Of course you can't. But today's TVs, they might be cheap. They're not free. So what are we talking about here? Well, one of the TVs on the market, or at least which will be on the market soon, <laughs> very soon, is free. You pay nothing. Wow. Well, it's called the Telly. Oi. It's a 55 inch 4K HDR theater display with a built-in soundbar, access to all your favorite streaming apps, its own built-in voice assistant, and even a webcam for video calling via Zoom. Wow. And yes, to be clear, that webcam does have more than one purpose, but don't worry about that. Hey, you don't want, don't even think about it, because yeah. baby, this TV is free. Yeah, think about all the webcam, the Zoom calls you're gonna be doing on your couch. and. And that's, that's why the microphone and the camera are there. So you can do that. No other reason at all. Don't even look into it because whack, this yeah. baby's free. Keep asking questions, I might raise the price. <laughs> but yeah, in all seriousness, Telly is a fascinating product because it takes a business model that we are all so deeply familiar with that we hardly even think about it at this point and applies it in a different way that hasn't really been tried before or at least not on this scale. Mm -hmm. So using the internet, particularly social media, it doesn't cost money beyond what you pay for your ISP for data. It's just there. Mm -hmm. And yet, somehow all these free services that we use are valued at tens of billions of dollars. How's that work? Well, it's because Facebook isn't the product. You are the product. Uh -huh. They don't need you to pay to use Facebook because the data that they collect about you constantly while you use it, and even while you're not using it, <laughs> is uh, valuable enough on its own to make them very, very rich. And unsurprisingly, Telly's founder also co-founded the free streaming service Pluto TV, which is good. It's free. How do they pay for that? <laughs> so yeah, Telly is taking that business model and applying it to a television set. And this isn't exactly unprecedented. Smart TVs have been running ads and collecting data for a while now to offset costs and keep prices low. Telly just takes this to its logical and very cynical conclusion and accomplishes this thanks to an entire second screen that plays ads constantly while also tracking everything that you do. Imagine a billboard in your house. Yes, we all 24%. love video billboards, yeah. right, everyone? Wow, I mean, for free even. Yeah, it keeps you company. It's always there. Yeah. So you're never alone. We love ads, except when they go woke, don't we, folks? <laughs> yeah, better see no rainbows on that second screen. Mm -mm. Uh, so here's Ars Technic with more on this. What would you be willing to do for a free TV? <laughs> don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> if the answer is hand over your information about what you watch, search for, and listen to on that TV, and for how long, how much money your household makes, what food and brands you like, and your race, and be subject to on-screen ads at any time, then Telly's got a deal for you. Ooh wee. I can already tell you what the household makes based on their uh, willingness to accept a free TV that tracks everything that they do. I mean, yeah, that is the very first data point for sure. Yes. But uh, yeah. Not it, enough to, <laughs> to sacrifice their privacy. Uh, here's The Verge with more. Equipped with a camera and microphone and paid for by the brands that show you ads, having a telly in your home has clear privacy implications <laughs> that might go beyond the tracking used by Vizio, Roku, LG, Samsung, and other TV manufacturers. On its viewing and activity data policy, Telly says it, quote, may collect information about the audio and video content you watch, the channels you view, and the duration of your viewing sessions, along with information about how you interact with the TV. That includes your search queries, the buttons you select, as well as the physical presence of you and any other individuals using the TV at any given time. Oh, and if you choose to opt out of data collection, you will either have to return the TV or pay the presumed cost of the dual screen TV plus soundbar setup yourself. Quote, you have the right to opt out of sharing your viewing and activity data, but unfortunately that means you will no longer have access to the services and must return the television. If you opt out and do not return the television to Telly, Telly will charge the credit card on file in the amount of $500. That's exactly what my question was going to be, is this is this has to come with some kind of security deposit. Also, this is the Nathan Fielder School of Business. 
I mean, this is Nathan like, would have been a little more clever about it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This but is it's, just on its face. It's like, okay, what's the catch, buddy? Well, yeah. Yeah, okay, sure. Absolutely a security deposit for the value of the TV. And, yeah, it's just... I don't know how exactly they plan on getting away with this, considering there are, you would assume, in many households, lots of children or one child or, you know, anyone under the age of 13. And we will get to that. Uh, that seems to not have really crossed their minds either. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that is a factor, an interesting factor that, yeah. Yeah, after, yeah. after years of doing this show, there are some instant questions that come to mind when companies try to fuck around there with privacy. There are laws in the books yeah. about these kinds of things. Even in this country. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, here goes Gizmodo with uh, even more on what exactly you're signing up for with Telly. Just wait. You know what you do? You say bye-bye to that $500 because you're probably never getting it back. I mean. <laughs> like, this is an experiment. Yeah. Yeah, here's more. The terms of service for Tele explicitly state that users must connect to the Wi-Fi at all times, and users are restricted from using any advertising blocking software anywhere on their network. The company's privacy policy is broad, covering not only your name, personal details, or even what you watch, but also your cultural or social identifiers, whether you're a fan of a sports team, care about the environment, and any other ad group, and any other inferences about your attributes and behavior the company can make. Of course, you can't opt out of any of this data collection. As Posen told Fast Company in probably the most we own you way possible, we know where you live, what your income bracket is, obviously it's all anonymized, but we know what car you're driving. We know when your lease is up. We know where you shop. We know what your favorite sports teams are, etc. Get out of my house! <laughs> yeah, and again, TVs are so cheap. They like are. Wait for a like Best Buy has sales year round, but even like the the entire month of fucking November, you can get a solid fucking TV for like two hundred. At this point, it's like it it's not even a time frame thing. You can go get like a whatever, like a TCL or a Westinghouse yeah. or something if you really need something. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> it's there's just no excuse for this. This is not a a product that is that anyone needs enough to make these sacrifices. And like, yeah, they're only really appealing to this the same types of people who it's like I'd rather someone do this yeah than uh do one of those like buy now pay later programs or like sure, yeah. rent a TV from rent a center and just like you end up paying fall, six thousand yeah, like, dollars for it yeah if if we're doing that versus this like yeah get sure. the telly get the fucking telly it's for your own good you are bad with money uh but yes the, the, this is so insane like okay internet outage that's that might that might cost you a little we bit. We noticed that uh, yeah, that went down for a little while there. Uh, mm, a little suspicious. Maybe we maybe something bad should happen to that Tercel you have parked in the, <laughs> in the driveway. It'd be a real <laughs> shame. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and if that wasn't all sketchy enough, uh, tech journalist Shoshana Wodinsky actually read Telly's full privacy policy and stumbled on something very interesting. And it's not just the fact that half of the words are missing spaces between them. Uh, here's what she found. As noted in the terms of use, we do not knowingly collect or solicit personal data about children under 13 years of age. If you are a child under the age of 13, please do not attempt to register or otherwise use the services or send us any personal data. Use of the services may capture the physical presence of a child under the age of 13, but no personal data about the child is collected. If we learn we have collected personal data from a child under 13 years of age, we will delete that information as quickly as possible. Parentheses. I don't know that this is accurate. Do we have to say we will delete the information or is there any other way around this? <laughs> If you believe that a child under 13 years of age may have provided personal data to us, please contact us. <laughs> this is a comedy show. <laughs> That's all it says. This is a comedy. This is a sketch. This all right, around. and put it up. <laughs> hey, do we have to say this? <laughs> they put like the red line contract yeah. into the actual terms. <laughs> like it would, it would. Hey, I don't know if this is actually possible. Are we actually committing to this? This is like uh, this is literally worse than finding like as an AI chatbot. I, yes. I cannot say oh that. Oh my god. Like, just like notes from lawyer being like, hey, we might be making claims that are highly illegal and yes. impossible for us to enforce. Can How do we get around that? Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the lawyer sent us this back. Just put it out. Put it into the, into the policy. <laughs> Can we say that? It's obviously fixed. So, uh, yeah, just amazing stuff. Someone else found, and like in an old version of the privacy policy, which also has been since amended, just like this one, uh, but they were like, one of the categories they would track would be like sexual orientation and sexual activity. Oh. And it's like, even in the most 
innocent possible interpretation of that. That should make everyone yes. wildly uncomfortable. Absolutely. Um, it's, 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 this, the privacy policy should just read no privacy. No privacy. You don't have any. <laughs> you give that up, but you get a free TV in yes, exchange. You, so, you come wave, on. Just, come on, it's, it's free. Just say you waive your legal, li uh, our legal liability yeah. at all for you to even use this thing. Yeah. It it's should, a nightmare. It should just be one of those contracts that you sign, like, when you go... Uh, you rent an ATV in the desert. Like, I, if you yeah. die, it is not on yeah. us. We, we take no responsibility for fucking anything. This TV is literally a deal with the devil. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, very cool. Uh, this all seems very on the level, and uh, it's a totally fair trade off <laughs> for a cool high tech TV that costs absolutely nothing. It's got two screens. How many screens does your TV have? Probably, <laughs> probably just one. Well, I have a DS. Yeah. So, I mean, come on. Freeze free, baby. You can't beat free. I, I, it's free. It's a free TV. <laughs> The only thing I'm like worried about and anticipating is like the the thumbnail and title of this video. Hey, kid! <laughs> Getting caught yeah. in like a spam filter. Clickbait. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Free TV. Did you guys get uh, hacked? Yeah. <laughs> That's like uh, when Patton Oswalt was hacked and was like, "What? I, I can't give someone a thousand dollars worth of iPads?" Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, speaking of free. Something that has been a recurring topic on this show going back years that resurfaces from time to time is just how stupid this country's tax filing system is compared to basically every other developed country. Ask them about their taxes. What? I don't know. It just happens. You guys do what? I did what? it on the bus. What do you mean? <laughs> you, do, you do what? You did it on the where? In the, in the United States, you had to do what now? Uh, yeah, so almost the entire tax preparation industry literally does not exist does not need to exist. It doesn't need to exist. It doesn't exist really outside of America. Uh, the IRS already knows how much money you make working at salaried or contracted jobs. And if you don't work either of those, they just watch you on your TV. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, this household, we don't need to tax them anymore. They have a free TV. Uh, these forms, uh, those forms you get in the mail every January, the IRS already has all that shit. It's already been reported. So for the vast majority of Americans whose income is just what they made working a normal job with maybe, I don't know, some stock investments on the side, tax preparation is an unnecessary extra step. And making it even more unnecessary is how confusing IRS Form 1040 can be for the average person. But that's where companies like h &R Block and TurboTax come in. And you pay them a small amount of money and they very helpfully take care of all of it for you. They make this problem go away for a fee. Mm -hmm. So to people from outside the U.S., though, this is all insane. The government just sends you a form, a one-page form, with all that information already filled out. You let them know if it's accurate or not, and then you just pay whatever you owe. Beep, bop, boop. Mm -hmm. We could have that here, but the tax prep industry has literally bribed Congress not to do anything about it by funding the campaigns of enough Congress members that any significant change never happens. And it's not bribery, it's legal. It's called lobbying. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Very cool. uh, yeah. Uh, plus, making filing your taxes easier, oh my gosh, that would put a whole lot of people out of work. That's thousands of jobs. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want that, would we? Nevertheless, the IRS has for a few years now openly discussed doing something about all this, and here's the Washington Post with the latest. The Internal Revenue Service has quietly built its own prototype system to allow Americans to file tax returns digitally and free of charge, according to three current and former agency officials, essentially creating government software that could disrupt the tax prep industry. The system will be available through a pilot program for a small group of taxpayers by January, when the 2024 filing season begins, said people who were briefed on the matter, who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss internal agency conversations. It was developed by the IRS and the U.S. Digital Service, the White House's technology consulting agency. Last year's Inflation Reduction Act, one of President Biden's chief legislative victories, included $15 million for the IRS to look into creating a direct filing program. So thank you, Joe Brandon, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the article then rehashes uh, a recurring rebuttal to this idea, which is that the IRS already partners with all the big tax filing companies for IRS Free File, which offers free tax prep services to people who meet certain qualifications. Uh, but w as we and many others, like John Oliver, have pointed out, uh, these programs are not advertised at all. They are nearly impossible to find unless you know exactly where to look which result in less than 3% of taxpayers actually using them. Intentionally obfuscated on the websites. Yeah. And, and confusing on purpose to get you to sign up for the page. Unless you type IRS free file, uh, the, that exact phrase, yeah. you will never find it. Because if you type uh, free TurboTax, free, they, the, all the top results are the version that's like 
free, but like it's just a way to trick you. And they're like, oh, wait, you own, you have a 401k? Okay, well, that that complicates things, buddy. Yeah, and uh, if you type in, if you go searching for it, because of the way our search engines work now, you're just going to get an ad to a company that rips you off instead right. of the actual website that yeah. you need. Yeah. So, yeah, the big tax prep companies, they're, of course, uh, they hate the idea of being made redundant here by the big government, of all things. And they are especially mad about the IRS's plans to uh, not only do this, but also add online customer service options for tax filers. Uh you know, Ooh. if you get confused while you're filing taxes, you can. There's like an IRS chatbot where you can be like, "Hey, yeah, uh, that would be too useful." Uh, yeah, and they're like, "Wait, that's what? That's our job. That's what we make billions of dollars a year doing." Yeah. So yeah, here's the the butt hurt section of the article, the fun part. Yeah. Is there a need for government to come compete with and change a functioning private sector industry? Yes. Said Tamir Tuluy, chief executive of free file vendor FileYourTaxes.com and a member of an IRS consulting panel of online tax prep experts. Industry representatives have been outspoken to lawmakers and administration officials about the direct filing program. Quote, a direct to IRS e-file system is wholly redundant and is nothing more than a solution in search of a problem, Intuit spokesman Rick Heineman said in a statement, and that solution will unnecessarily cost taxpayers billions of dollars. Intuit spent $1 million between January and March lobbying both House and Senate lawmakers on issues including tax system integrity and intellectual property protections, according to disclosures. This month, Intuit began making payments to 4.4 million low-income Americans as part of a $141 million settlement to resolve claims that it misled taxpayers and diverted them away from free products to premium services. Under the terms of the settlement, the company did not admit wrongdoing. H&R Block spent $720,000 over the same period on lobbying regarding various anti-poverty tax credits, tax administration, and internal revenue service funding, according to its disclosure paperwork. So yeah, is this the industry that you want to tear apart by uh, rendering them completely redundant through a simple, uh, you know, IRS filing system? A that system you that can works use? worldwide. It just doesn't seem fair. Not think, even reinventing think of, the wheel here. Think of the tax prep business, guys. Come on, we need these people and their these, services. These blood-sucking assholes. <laughs> what would we do without them? God. So yeah, fuck them. I, I hope this drives them all out of business. But uh, mm. yeah, we wouldn't put it past Congress to find a way to stop uh, the IRS's secret program. And I think they're keeping it secret for a reason. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they'd stop it under the guise of job creation or some other bullshit. They love that. But for now, things are looking much more promising than they have in the past. So that's cool. Well, right now they're like, Unemployment, too low. Can't have uh, too low unemployment. Well, this would fix that, too. There you go. Yeah. It's a win for everyone. I mean, yeah, if, if they're going to Larry Summers this shit and just, you know, <laughs> treat human beings like, uh, like you know, spreadsheet uh, cells. Yeah. If we need more unemployment, uh, I will volunteer the tax industry <laughs> yeah. to uh, handle that burden. I love, and too, just, like, the idea that, like, w when they ha have the option to do the free tax filing service on H&R Block or Intuit or whatever, it's like... Well, you know, this free one might be, you might, you might have fudged the numbers and then you're going to be on the hook for a lot more. But uh, over here we have H&R's audit block where we guarantee that you will not be contacted. Is that a, by is the, that a product that they sell? It's something like that. Yeah. Because so they're just selling the security of yeah. you not fucking up yourself. Well, so if I didn't get the audit block, are you telling me? Uh, well, I don't <laughs> know. Uh, I guess you'll have to spend the yeah. $120 to find out. It's such a like another crazy thing about like U.S. taxes. It's like it's it's so complicated and uh, like fudging your taxes is like such a just accepted part of it that like I mean if everyone was just doing their taxes like as it is like yeah. who cares if you get audited like you told the truth yeah but uh, every fucking tax prep guy is like all right so like let's start thinking here like, <laughs> yeah yeah well, let's start charity. brainstorming yeah yeah and so it's like yeah. It's just funny. It's it's a very weird and convoluted way we do things here, and that's the way we do everything here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, because otherwise that would be communism. This way, the private sector, yes. uh, you know, allows competition and everyone wins. Yep. Well, not a, just the, the, the companies win. We, but we don't lose. <laughs> you got that right. Uh, but anyway, let's move on now to some other regulation news. Um, some AI news that actually is potentially good potentially good news regulation is coming 
Not here, of course, and don't hold your breath. It's happening over in the EU. Although uh, there was a congress, some congressional hearings uh, today, yeah. uh, Tuesday, on AI, and like, no, hardly anyone heard about it because for, somehow everyone, I don't remember if it was the Senate or Congress, but not a single person managed to say something idiotic yeah. uh, while uh, testifying. So it sounds like this one, like both parties are kind of like, yeah, this AI shit's kind of scary and we should probably look into it. They haven't found a way to like, uh, culture war, the topic. Yeah, well, yet. Uh, their their kids haven't found out about it yet yeah. and messed with them, and it hasn't gone gay yet, so they can't really make any statements about. So something yeah, I mean, promising, still plenty of time for them to fuck it up. But over in the EU, yeah, um, they're passing legislation on AI that's pretty aggressive. So uh, here's the verge. The EU has taken a step closer to enforcing strong regulation of AI, drafting new safeguards that would prohibit a wide range of dangerous use cases. These include prohibitions on mass facial recognition programs in public places and predictive policing algorithms that try to identify future offenders using personal data. The regulation also requires the creation of a public database of high-risk AI systems deployed by public and government authorities so that EU citizens can be informed about when and how they are being affected by this technology. So the AI Act, as it's called, has been approved so far by multiple committees by some pretty wide margins. It seems to have pretty strong approval. It still has several steps before it is fully approved. And luckily, it has been in development for several years already. And they just recently, they've been updating it a lot lately based on how much shit has changed yeah. with AI in just the past year. But it seems like it's, they're not rushing this through. They've been working on it for a while. And uh, here's a list of what the EU AI Act would explicitly ban uh, specifically when it comes to surveillance. Real-time remote biometric identification systems in publicly accessible spaces. Post-remote biometric identification systems with the only exception of law enforcement for the prosecution of serious crimes and only after judicial authorization. Biometric categorization systems using sensitive characteristics, e.g. gender, race, ethnicity, citizenship status, religion, political orientation. Predictive police systems, based on profiling, location, or past criminal behavior, emotion recognition systems in law enforcement, border management, workplace, and educational institutions, and indiscriminate scraping of biometric data from social media or CCTV footage to create facial recognition databases violating human rights and right to privacy. And that last one is, like, huge. That last one, already in the U.S., there's yeah. companies that have just the mountains of uh, data, which all the social companies just let them hoover up and which there's no laws stopping anyone from doing it. Yeah. That's like that, the meetings today, the open AI guy was like, this industry needs regulation. Yeah. Get on top of it right now. Because if you just leave the door open long enough, it will be exploited to its logical conclusion until someone puts a stop to it. Like, yeah, no one's no, going to not hold themselves back from this. I mean, this is how business works in America. I yeah. say this over and over again. But like, even if you have the best intentions, if you run a for-profit business, um, especially one that has a lot of investors behind it, uh, you, you're you fucked. You have to do what is in the best financial interest of the company. Yeah. And that comes ahead of any ethics you might have. You are literally, you. if you are that ethical CEO, you would want, you would beg for regulation so that you could still strive for the best possible profits without like, you need you an know, excuse violating your own ethics. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of this stuff is already happening, but it's good that they're trying to do something about it sooner rather than later. And that's just the stuff related to surveillance and tracking. When it comes to stuff like ChatGPT and MidJourney, these companies are probably shitting themselves right now. Good. Yeah. Uh, from the article, under the proposed legislation, the creators of these systems will have new obligations to assess and mitigate various risks before these tools are made available. These include assessing the environmental damage of training these systems, which are often energy intensive, and forcing companies to disclose the use of training data protected under copyright law. Mm. The last clause could have a significant effect in the US, where copyright holders have launched a number of lawsuits against the creators of AI image generators for using their data without consent. Many tech companies like Google and OpenAI have avoided these sorts of legal challenges by simply refusing to disclose what data they train their systems on, usually claiming this information is a trade secret. If the EU forces companies to disclose training data, it could open up lawsuits in the US and elsewhere. Please, please, EU, save us from ourselves. Regulate them. I love this, because, yeah, yeah, again, like, uh, any lawsuit over, over uh, copyright with AI, which... It will be a groundbreaking lawsuit when it actually happens. Mm -hmm. Like, it will be retroactive. Yeah. Because they just started doing this shit without asking permission. They were just gobbling up 
every picture on the internet, regardless of the copyright, and uh, putting it into their their stuff and gobbling and with text the same way. Like a lot of that, that text is copyrighted text. We don't have a legal precedent for what that means exactly. Yeah. Training an AI on it. They fucking did it. And now, until that's all settled, like they are open to litigation. And this would make it very easy to sue them because it'd be forced by law in one part of the world to reveal what that training data is. And anyone anywhere else in the world would be able to be like, huh. oh, just as I suspected. Thanks anyway, for doing the work. you're sued. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> cool. And the great thing about the EU being way more competent at drafting timely and sensible legislation than the U.S. is that the EU countries are a big enough global marketplace that their laws often, like we said, have at least some effect on how companies operate here. Uh, it's not nearly as good as having a legislature of our own that's actually useful, but it's not nothing. <laughs> so there you go. And hopefully at some point Congress can decide to borrow the EU's notes on this topic, but make it look like their own work. Yeah. Yeah. Again, thanks for doing that work for us. We're just going to... Don't mind us. And it wouldn't even be hard. Hell, they, they can just ask ChatGPT to yeah. go ahead and do that for them so they can stay focused on important stuff like uh, toothpaste going woke or which beer company went woke first. The toothpaste or... has gone woke. The toothpaste is transing the kids. Yep. It's all the fluoride. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right, yeah. Anyways, we will finally get to this week's segment of the the Elon Musk AKA report. it somehow gets worse. Yeah, his latest antics and it's they're not fun anymore. No, I I hate this man. Yes. Uh, it's more bullshit from the king of bullshit. Uh, but yeah, we'll get to that after we let you know that this episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. We all shop online, we all love deals, the best deals, mm -hmm. and we've all seen that promo code field taunting us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you will watch the prices drop. Yeah, I got some shoes recently mm. uh, and it was, it was some pretty big savings. It was like $20, not these shoes. Those are old shoes. These are old shoes. Yeah. They weren't even for me. They were a gift. Oh, cool. For a child. <laughs> but yeah, Honey doesn't just work on desktop. It works on your iPad iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. We'd never recommend something we don't use. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash newsday. That is joinhoney.com slash newsday. And this episode is sponsored by Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, your utility bills and favorite streaming services, inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, there's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It is Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. And that's the same price they were before. Mm -hmm. That's right. For people looking for extra savings this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash newsday. That's mintmobile.com slash newsday. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash newsday. Just like that TV, these ads keep the lights running on internet today. That's right. So thanks for enjoying our free show. The show is free. That's right. But it's Elon time. That's right. <laughs> and boy, is this man exhausting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was pretty fun seeing him make his big announcement last Thursday or Friday about who Twitter's new CEO would be, and then seeing all of Elon's most dedicated simps turn on him immediately upon learning that the new CEO, she worked for the World Economic Forum, and therefore is an Illuminati globalist who wants to inject 5G into everyone. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these people also, they have the attention span of goldfish, though, so despite them all lamenting the death of Twitter and demanding refunds for their Twitter Blue subscriptions, uh, all Elon had to do to get them back on his side was uh, go dance weirdly, just dance that stress away down in Cabo over the weekend and come back to work and jangle his keys in front of his simps and uh, to get their attention away from 
the World Economic Forum. And to make sure that it worked 100%, the keys that he jangled were racist. Yes. They were racist keys. Hey, look at this. He said, Racism. He said, don't worry about censorship on this platform. I'll show you just how extreme we can get. Yeah. Uh, don't worry, I'm not woke. I'm the opposite of woke. Yeah, he, it, it was almost like, like his, uh, his, his uh, entire worldview was questioned momentarily. Mm -mm. And he said, no, no, no. I'll show you just how gnarly I can get. Yeah. So for starters, Elon engaged in his usual Twitter behavior of replying with one word answers under other people's tweets that he finds concerning or whatever. But this time he, he mixed it up a bit. Under a meme posted by one of Tim Pool's groupies implying that people ignore all violent crimes except when the assailant is white and the victim is black, Elon wrote, accurate. Okay, well, that itself is interesting and very concerning. Uh, yeah, and just not fucking... It's not accurate, no, actually. No, it's uh, very strange to see him writing that. Uh, there were a few other questionable one-word replies to post about black people, but then Elon really went for it in a way that he knew his followers would love. He started posting about George Soros. Oh, baby. Elon, I'm so sorry. Anyway, yeah, George Soros is an interesting topic because basically every right-wing accusation about Soros is a confession. He is a super rich guy who funds liberal and pro-democracy causes worldwide, which I guess would be pretty upsetting if you're against those things. But Soros is just one man whose politics really aren't that radical. And his impact is actually pretty small compared to the many, many similarly mega rich political donors on the right who not only directly fund politicians but also collectively prop up most of the online conservative media ecosystem you can go to opensecrets.org and just see this there's george soros at the top and it's like oh wow that's scary and then you just keep scrolling you're like huh a lot more red than blue on here harlan crow and yeah look i'm i agree it's not great that george soros can donate a hundred million dollars to influence u.s politics yeah, it's, but it's stupid. Interestingly, the people who constantly rant about him doing that uh, never really seem all that interested in discussing maybe legislation to prevent that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Get money out of politics. We don't need billionaires. In fact, we did the opposite uh, 13 years ago yeah. or so with Citizens United. And that's because they actually massively benefit from that kind of political spending. Yes. And they want you to focus on that guy over there and not these guys over here. But we digress. Yeah. So on Monday, Elon posted, Soros reminds me of Magneto. Which, wow, okay, nerd. Dork. But also, as Brian Krasenstein, of all people, pointed out in reply, Magneto's experiences during the Holocaust as a survivor shaped his perspective as well as his depth and empathy. Soros, also a Holocaust survivor, gets attacked nonstop for his good intentions, which some Americans think are bad, merely because they disagree with his political affiliations. And yeah, what he doesn't point out there explicitly is that a lot of George Soros hate is pretty much just textbook anti-Semitism. And now not every Soros hater is an anti-Semite, but hating Soros is a very convenient dog whistle for the ones that are. It is done intentionally in a lot of cases because of the implication. Yeah. So anyway, Elon replied to that with, you assume they are good intentions. They are not. He wants to erode the very fabric of civilization. Soros hates humanity, which is, wow, holy shit. That's a pretty great example of exactly what we just described. Literally just taking 100 year old phrases right out of the anti-Semite playbook, but replacing the Jews with Soros. Yes. What the fuck are you saying? Oh, he, what, he hates humanity. He's a super villain. Shut the fuck up. And are we saying that Elon Musk himself is anti-Semitic? I don't know. Impossible to know. Probably not, at least not consciously. He's probably just doing literally what teenage boys do as they fall down the alt-right rabbit hole online, but he's doing it as a 51-year-old man, which is weird. Yes. Also, Elon. That, this at least makes some sense for some, like, 4chan teenager with 20 bucks to his name to fall into. Like, oh, this billionaire is the source of my problems. Mm -hmm. Sir, you are literally worth more than George Soros. Your net worth is 25 times bigger than his. You do not get to go on the social media platform that you bought for six times George Soros' net worth to complain that George Soros has too much power and influence over the world. Fuck you. He's giving the game away. By, by being that much Fucking richer than idiot. George Soros and attempting to, uh, you know, change the tide of politics by purchasing what he thinks is the world's town square, it is just telling on himself. Yeah, it's fucking weird. Like, if I was worth 
$180 billion, I would simply refrain from being like, hey guys, aren't billionaires fucking insane? Yeah, yeah. aren't they terrible for the world? But his, he knows his fans will eat that shit up because they're fucking idiots. He is, and it works. He is mainlining the right-wing extremism pipeline. Like, it's crazy. But it's especially crazy because he's like mainlining the right-wing pipeline from like six years ago. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's like, does he, is he going through like an? Is he just catching up on some archived version of 4chan that he's had like on a hard drive? Somewhere? No, he's he, all. How of does this, this happen? Well, first of all, he. Uh, all of his posts that are popular came from fucking cryptocurrency, which in a lot of ways has that inherently in it, at least libertarianism well, and, uh, and, yeah, and stuff like that. Not every crypto person, but a lot of them have a lot of ideas about central banking and who controls so, banking and all that. And uh. A lot of his virulosity on Twitter outside of Tesla and SpaceX and all that uh, came from sources that have a vested interest in guiding his political views as well. Then he starts leaning into right-wing stuff uh, after that, because he's getting numbers and people are vocally supporting this. It yeah, is, and there's people, it is reinforced. And is, people openly being like, yes, hell yes, Elon, this is our guy, right guys? Yes, they're constantly reinforcing this through engagement. So yes, this is exactly the way that it played out in the lead up to Trump. It is yeah. this constant online reinforcement of uh, what boils down to extreme uh, ideology but doing it in a way that's like, ha, it's funny, it's a meme, you see? Yeah. And also, I'm just asking questions. But he's constantly being reinforced on this, so then he buys a platform and then makes it so that all of those opinions are algorithmically boosted, so it seems like those are the only opinions, and at least before that, it was the only opinions that he's seeing. So yes, he is radicalizing himself because he likes the attention well, that this is getting. the left's fault, because if they if the left had bought Twitter Blue, this wouldn't happen, so um, take, <laughs> take some responsibility. You did not give Elon $8, if and you therefore had, yeah. you are responsible. If you'd given Elon $8, he would have seen your posts about, uh, you know, not this, <laughs> and uh, wouldn't have turned into your average Facebook uncle who has zero fucking media literacy. Yeah, he just, he he built himself an echo chamber. <laughs> it, it, I, I don't know what else to say, Like, and that's why he's doing it. An echo chamber. <laughs> yeah. And that's why he's doing it at such a rapid pace, because he's getting all of the attention. It's not spread out anymore. Anyways, in addition to earning back his fan base trust by playing one of their favorite hits, mm. the reasons for Elon randomly deciding to post about George Soros also probably has to do with some news that dropped hours earlier uh, about George Soros selling all his Tesla stock a few months back. Some real mm, boss baby shit. You, that's, it, like, that's 100% why. Yes! Yeah. This, this like came out of nowhere. He's like, I'm going to start talking about George Soros. And it's like, Weird that you're doing this for like the first time, like two hours after they report that George Soros sold like an insane amount of Tesla stock. It's only going to get worse from here, folks, because now <laughs> that he's playing the Soros song, the crowd will not stop asking for an encore. Oh, yeah. Play I, Soros again. Going back to what I just said, this is going to get worse the more he's enabled. Yeah. So, yeah, it might have had a, 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 a secret third reason. Yeah, so uh, there was that. There was, but uh, there might be another reason. Yeah, it would be getting everyone to focus on how much you apparently hate George Soros instead of focusing on some other potentially damning Elon Musk news that's uh, trending at the same time. Well, here's CNBC. The U.S. Virgin Islands issued a subpoena to Tesla CEO Elon Musk seeking documents for that government's lawsuit against J.P. Morgan Chase over sex trafficking by the bank's late longtime customer Jeffrey Epstein, a court filing revealed Monday. That filing said the Virgin Islands has tried unsuccessfully to serve Musk with the subpoena, which was issued on April 28th, because of suspicion that Epstein may have referred or attempted to refer Musk as a client to J.P. Morgan. Yikes. And yeah, Elon, of course, denies any ties to Epstein, while there's also some evidence that might not be entirely accurate. We're not going to get into it, but having your name and Jeffrey Epstein's name in the same headline is understandably something you would maybe want to get ahead of and distract people away from. Oh, I know what I'll do. Yeah, but Anti that's... Anti-Semitism. But that's maybe giving Elon too much credit, because he seemingly does, in fact, have the political opinions of your average Facebook uncle, as shown in this CNBC interview from Tuesday. It was, I think, incorrectly ascribed to be a white supremacist action. Um, and the evidence for that uh, was some obscure Russian website that no one's ever heard of, that had no followers. Um, and the, the, the company that, came, that found this is Bellingcat. Right. And do you know what Bellingcat does? PsyOps. Right. 
I couldn't really even follow exactly what it was you were trying to express there, so that's in part why I was curious. I'm, but I'm saying that I thought this, the, 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 the ascribing it to white supremacy was bullshit. Okay. And, and, uh, and, 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 and that the information for that uh, came from an obscure Russian website and was somehow magically found by Bellingcat, which is a company that does PSYOPs. And there's no proof, by the way, that he was not. There's no proof. I, I would say that there's no proof that he is. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Also in that interview he talked, he called work from home uh, immoral for like yeah. the stupidest reasons. Yeah. Uh, but but this, this, this highlight here about uh, getting called out on uh, just basically calling the Allen, Texas shooting a conspiracy. Uh, yeah, the advertisers, they're definitely clawing their way back to Twitter after hearing that. Good job. <sighs> also, what a fucking idiot. Yeah. We have pictures of the shooter's Nazi tattoo. Verified by the pol by the yeah. police and investigators, before, federal investigators. Before we all saw the pictures, the local police immediately confirmed that, yeah, the guy was covered in all sorts of Nazi tattoos and other Nazi regalia. We know because we're the cops and we showed up. And far right and, patches uh, and everything. Yeah, the, Mr. Policeman, I gave you all the clues. Yeah. Um, the existence of the guy's social media profile, it wasn't revealed by Bellingcat, like Elon keeps saying. It was revealed by the police and in media coverage of the police's statements. And Bellingcat just did a little inner de detective work and found it yeah. and showed it to everyone. And finally, sir, if it is a PSYOP, as you say, explain, lay out your theory. If you're gonna say something's a PSYOP, I wanna hear you uh, explain how exactly that would work. We would love to hear your full thoughts on this, because I have a feeling you don't have, like, if you were to say it out loud, it would sound fucking idiotic, but I, I, I'm, prove me wrong. Explain how this event, this, oh God, the killer was a Nazi, how is that a psyop and not just something that fucking happens a lot? And also, why are you so interested in, in, in that not being true? Yeah, what's up with that? I would also like to point out that this is another damning indictment of uh, the current state of media. The fact yeah. that he wasn't pressed on anything well, he said. The reporter, reporter didn't even said, know what the word psyop meant. And he also He's just like, said, I don't know what uh, you meant. Uh, the reporter, you know, he didn't agree with him, but he might as well have because he just said, okay, to everything yeah, he said. Yeah, no, it was wild. Seemingly verifying what he said as being true. He said it was something, I believe the clip was something about the Bellingcat thing. And he goes, yeah, okay. Um, okay, sure. And it's just like, if you don't push back or even dig the tiniest bit, you cannot get him to reveal how much of a fucking idiot he is. All he had to say was like, okay, explain. Yes, d delve further into why you think that is. Elaborate. This is a pretty bold claim. Elaborate on that. But it's obviously not in their best interest as a media company in general, but also specifically the business channel yeah. of the media empire to, to to question the guy whose multiple companies are worth billions of dollars. It's it's very ups I'll, I'll just say it's very upsetting. Yeah. It's not good. A follow-up question would have been lovely. But hey, say what you will about the man regardless of his opinions, mis misinformed, misinformed uh, as they may be, uh, he is unequivocally uh, he's he, the man is standing up for his free speech oh, probably yeah. more than anyone else. And uh, speaking of which, uh, here's Insider. Wikipedia co-founder Jimmy Wales criticized Twitter CEO Elon Musk's decision to restrict some content on the social media platform leading up to Turkey's tightly contested presidential election, which will now be determined in a runoff election. Wales was weighing in on a Saturday exchange between Musk, a self-proclaimed free speech absolutist, and Bloomberg columnist Matt Iglesias about Twitter's Friday announcement that it would restrict access to some content in Turkey following legal process. Twitter's global government affairs account had tweeted about the changes ahead of Turkey's presidential election held on Sunday. The Turkish government asked Twitter to censor its opponents right before an election, and Elon Musk complied, Bloomberg columnist Matt Iglesias tweeted Saturday. In response, Musk tweeted, Did your brain fall out of your head, Iglesias? The choice is have Twitter throttled in its entirety or limit access to some tweets. Which one do you want? Wales wrote in a tweet Sunday that Wikipedia stood strong for our principles and fought to the Supreme Court of Turkey and won. This is what it means to treat freedom of expression as a principle rather than a slogan. 
Wales was referring in his tweet to a ban Wikipedia previously faced from Turkey's government. From 2017 to 2020, the Turkish government blocked access to Wikipedia after an entry on the website said the country was a sponsor of the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda terrorist groups, Insider previously reported. Turkey's highest court determined that blocking the website was unconstitutional and access to Wikipedia was restored in January 2020, the New York Times reported. So, yeah, of course, Elon wasn't going to let Jimmy Wales get the last word here. He's probably he probably runs the world with all those two dollar donations you've all been giving him. We need to put a stop to Jimmy Wales. But, yeah, he uh, Elon tweeted, we've pushed harder for free speech than any other Internet company, including Wokipedia at Jimmy Wales. Is he referring, uh. to, does he think Jimmy Wales runs Wikipedia? Is that what you think? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, OK, I mean. In this specific case, Jimmy Wales would seem to be objectively, undeniably correct about fighting harder for free speech against the Turkish government than Twitter. I don't know how you could see it any other way, but okay. Sure, dude. This is more of just, and, and it showed up in the replies too, Musk simps be agreeing with him it, only because he's the one that's saying he's doing it. Yeah. This would literally constitute a Twitter file 7.0 or whatever yeah, number they are Yeah, this is literally on. a government saying, please remove these tweets, and Twitter being like, okay, okay, yeah, no pushback at all. Yeah, Versus Wikipedia, like, I mean, they have a long history of this in a lot of places, but yeah, going, making this a years-long Supreme Court case. I, I mean, Google, uh, not, I don't love Google, but back in the day, like, they had this, they planned this big expansion into fucking China that cost them a shitload of money, and once China started, like, censoring uh, Google search results, they're like, all right, nope, this goes against our principles, bye. Like, that's standing up for free speech. And this also, because it's done in such a public fucking pussy way, Elon Musk be like, well, they were going to block my website, yeah. as pointed out by many who concerned people online. This sets a precedent for every fucking country to say that they're going to block Twitter whenever they have something coming up that would, uh, that social media chatter would hurt their chances of passing yeah. or any election they might This is not the last to. time this will no! happen. No! This, set, this says to every other uh, regime out there, like, hey, just threaten to block our media platform in your country and we'll do whatever you want. When other countries do it, it's fine. That's part of doing business. When America does it, that's yeah. that's going to be a 200 tweet thread oh, with a lot of scare words Don't bluff, Turkey. Boom. I'll do whatever you want. I'm Elon. Fuck off. Like, and I just, it's so absolutely maddening. All of his simps being like, well, what did you want him to do? I don't know, motherfucker. The stand up. Like, the, fucking the, take the a fucking stand. The thing he claimed stand. he was going to do yeah. six months ago. A government is asking you to censor content. You are a free speech absolutist. Like, the answer, I would assume, would not to be, like, roll over and be like, all right, fine. Immediately. Right. Yeah. Immediately roll over. No, free speech. Absolute. Is, absolute ish. Uh, absolute ish. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's uh, the uh, Anthony DeVolder of uh, social media CEOs. Free speech, absolute-ish. Anyway, very frustrating week. <sighs> Except for that free TV. Yeah, I can't can't wait for my free TV to, like... I'm going to watch it with my pants off. <laughs> <laughs> Jerking the entire time. I'm going to I'm gonna dangle just a baby in front of the screen the whole time. Yeah. I'm going to go get me a baby just for this TV. That way it can't spy on you. Yes. Uh, but the other stuff, it can spy on you. So, you know, no... Nothing else. Yeah. No funny business in front of the TV. I'm going to just have... It's gonna the ruin, TV stays out of the bedroom. It's going to ruin my viewing experience a lot, but I'm just going to have a boombox playing like Disney music the whole time I'm watching TV. Yeah, complete sensory overload. That's what I need in yeah. my relaxing viewing experience. Yeah, it's a free TV. I Imagine mean, watching like Succession with this on the bottom of it. Or anything. Anything. Oh, man. That's, that's what's funny about it. It's like any kind of intentional viewing is thrown out the window. window. And most non-intentional viewing is literally putting kids in front of the idiot box where they're going to get marketed to and are probably breaking the privacy policy of. It'd be great at a bar, though. Oh, yeah. This is great for bars. Yeah. Fantastic for bars. They get free TVs, and they don't give a fuck what's on it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's our episode. Um, we did more Elon news in our last episode. We talked all about the, the, uh, the kind of blowback he experienced from his fans in the wake of his announcement of Twitter's new CEO. Yeah, they're back, though. They're back, though. And then uh, before that, we talked about Trump's CNN town hall and why that was such a great idea. It was like, Couldn't have any yeah. other negative consequences I'm so at all. glad that happened. Great. Great yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyways, check out those videos if you haven't already. Make sure you like the video.
Like the video, the confetti goes everywhere. We forgot to say it. We're going to get less likes now because we forgot to say it. Prove us wrong. Like the video. Leave a comment down below. Reply to a comment, maybe. Just engage. It helps the channel grow, and it makes us love you even more. Don't make us angry. Engage. Bye. Engage. Like.